many of my dances are about relationships. You know, my therapist used to say to me that I sexualized my feelings. Framing things in a sexual context has been a way how I've negotiated my way through life. These dances, in some ways, is another way of dealing with that highly sexualized way of expression without actually having sex. The way we're doing the studio series now is really a result of some of the things that we discovered last year during the Bird Retrospective Festival. Audiences really like the idea of returning to th seeing things they had seen before, having another opportunity to do that. What we are trying to do is create an anchor repertory that it anchors the dancers aesthetically and the audience as well. And they go, oh yeah, I know that. that those are classic Spectrum pieces. And then so that, that it kind of creates a, a sense of familiarity and comfort. The Studio Series originally was about emerging choreographers, local. And then it started to evolve into not only local and emerging choreographers doing works at Spectrum, but about my having an opportunity to revive older works that I had done. And now it's evolving into what the relationship of Spectrum is to the audience. It's evolved into giving the audience a chance to kind of understand who we are better by having something that's familiar so that they can actually see the evolution as it moves into territory that's unfamiliar. There are two programs for the studio series this year. The first one is called Relationships, and the second one is called Peering into the Ballroom, Three Dances. The first program is really about the relationship that people have with each other, the relationship that you have with your society, and uh, the relationship that a performer has with the audience. There is a, a reworking of a piece that was originally a site-specific work called Soapbox. Soapbox was done uh, uh, in one of the public spaces downtown in Seattle, and it was what it implies. It was a soapbox. It was an opportunity for uh, the audience or the viewer to get on their soapbox and rant and rave or whatever they wanted to do on any subject that they wanted to do. The reworked version is obviously for theatrical space, and uh, the intention is a little bit different. I, I, it's to allow the audience to do the same thing, or a viewer or a person, to get on their soapbox for a couple of minutes. But it's also an investigation, I think, of the First Amendment, the uh, freedom of speech and freedom of expression clause in the First Amendment. The other pieces on the program are uh, the duet from Drastic Cuts, uh, which was supposed to be part of the Bird Retrospective last year, but was not because there was an injury, so it was not on the program. And then uh, 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 we're bringing back, back a Sentimental Catabolism, which seems to be really popular, and also a piece called uh, Conti Fantastique, which was a piece that was commissioned by the American Harp Association that premiered in July. I've done five or six dances that where the settings were ballrooms and uh, like, like a referenced late 19th century European ballrooms. And so one of them is La Valse. And with La Valse, it's being staged by one of the original dancers in it, April Megan, who was then April Wanstall, with the support of Jamal Story, who danced in my company. And then La Balle Noir, which was done on Koresh Dance Company in Philadelphia, and that's being staged by uh, Melissa Rector, who was in the original cast there and who's still a company member there. And then Longing, uh, which is being staged by Aaron Thayer. Uh, it was created originally for Cincinnati Ballet, and uh, he came to stage that.
the second program, Peering Into the Ballroom, the idea was to convert the space, half of the space, the performance part of the space would be framed. So there's a frame between the audience and the, and the performers. And on the performer side, the idea was to create an installation or a space that attempted to mimic or look like a late 19th century European ballroom. And so that kind of goes through different configurations, but basically it stays the same over the course of the evening. So that they are watching uh, these dances framed, and in a sense the kind of proscenium notion of framing is kind of artificial because nobody, their life isn't really like that, life is more three-dimensional. Uh, so we're going to acknowledge that in some way by putting this frame here and to kind of draw attention to the, uh, the artificiality of it and hopefully that sometimes by having things be artificial what's authentic about them starts to emerge because then we not, we're not trying to fool the audience that this is real life, we're letting them know that it's only a, a particular way of looking at, at, at life. The, the thing with the Helmut Newton images and, and the idea of kind of using that as a, a way to kind of create promotional material for the program, uh, they are, uh, the, the peering into the ballroom dances are about, in, in some ways, the kind of subtext of all three of those dances, uh, the subtext is, uh, is desire and, uh, and longing. Uh, unfulfillment. There's an aspect of all three of these dances of Le Bal Noir, of Longing, and of La Valse that's about uh, people being objectified because that's how they know how to connect, but at the same time resenting being objectified. And, and, and about how uh, 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 desi sexual desire is a driving force and factor in many of the choices and the decisions that people make or the lack of decisions, that the, the unthoughtfulness of some of the choices they make because they're driven by, by desire, by lust, by uh, 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 wanting. I feel kind of insane right now with the amount <laughs> I do with the amount of material that we're trying to cram into a really short amount of time. <laughs>